Hi, I'm Bruce Hall from Velodyne LiDAR, and I would like to introduce you today to the HDL64E LiDAR sensor. This is a product that we manufacture here in Morgan Hill, California at Velodyne. And it was used extensively in the DARPA Urban Challenge and subsequently in lots of research projects in universities and companies around the world. Uh, here is an example of a finished version of the HDL64. And you can see it has a spinning head. Uh, it has some lenses in the front here, and here's a, a glass panel that, that shields its lenses. There are actually 64 lasers inside this device. They are fixed aligned at a vertical spread from plus 2 to minus 24 degrees. And there are 64 lasers fixed position in between that spread of vertical positioning. And they all fire at about 4,000 times per revolution. So as the unit spins, each of the lasers fires out and get, captures a time of flight distance point, and we're able to plot that information on a computer readout. So the beauty of this device is that it creates a very rich point cloud of the world around you. And it's a 3D image of the world around you. It is a 1.3 million uh, pixels per second data rate that comes out over an Ethernet uh, cable, and that's out of this connector here. And to talk a little bit more about how the product works, let me set this aside and bring one that's had its cover removed, and that's going to be this guy here. And what we have here are essentially two blocks of data. And if you look, you remember the front panel here, okay, and here's a top block and here's a lower block. Okay, this is how we refer to these different banks of lasers inside the unit. Each of these blocks has 32 lasers, totaling 64. And if we look at the lenses in the front here, what we're going to realize is that the lasers fire outside the outer lenses, bounce off the target that we're looking at, and the light comes back through the center lens. And the way that works is if you can look uh, over right here, there's a bank of 16 lasers right here. And here are the cables that make the lasers work. All of the electronics connect to the, the circuit board, which is just under the lid on the top, which is where all the data processing takes place and all the firing order and all of the Ethernet packets creation and all that stuff happens on the circuit board. We fire each of these lasers in order. The, the, the light comes out through this lens, out to the target, and then back through the center, and is captured on an avalanche photodiode detector, which is mounted on this board here. So there are 32 avalanche photo dete detectors on this board, and then here's uh, 16 lasers, 16 lasers, 32 photo detectors. So these are all fixed aligned. And then we have another lower block, which does the same thing again for 32 more lasers, totaling 64. So as you can see, the entire unit spins. Down here, this device here is called a rotary encoder. This tells us where we are in the rotation. And when we report out our data, we send you the rotational information as well as the distance points for each of the fi laser firings. Uh, we have a cable down here. This is our connector. And you can see we're connected up here like this. Uh, we have a motor controller. This connects to here and goes down through our motor, which is here in the base. This is made out of stainless steel. Very, very sturdy construction down here. Uh, and here are some weights. This is for counterbalancing. It's very important that the unit be statically balanced uh, and dynamically balanced so that it stays in, in, in balance as it spins. And actually, I can show you this one spinning. Um, I promise you nothing will fly off and, and hurt us. But here's the unit spinning up. We're actually here in our lab, so we're actually uh, building these units as we speak here in, the, in our manufacturing facility. And this unit here is spinning at 300 RPM. The unit can spin uh, between 300 and 900 RPM, which is between 5 and 15 hertz. And typically, uh, computer rendering schemes will refresh the, uh, the scene once every revolution. So you basically got between 5 and a 15 hertz refresh rate relative to data coming out of the sensor. We're outside of our facility now, and I, we have a, a rack here, and on which is mounted an HDL64 sensor that we have in a little uh, fixture here. So we have our wire, we have it obviously spinning, we have our connector, and what I'd like to do is go inside and show you the image that this is actually creating. And if you, we were to pan down our parking lot here, you'll see there's lots of cars. We have some flat, drivable parking lot area here. We have a curb over here to the right. Uh, and let's go in and have a look at what these features look like if you were a 3D LiDAR camera. Here we are back inside our facility, and if you remember, we showed you the parking lot outside. And here in the center is where the laser camera is actually situated. And what we're going to do is if we rotate this a little bit, we can get a sense we're looking from our building out into the parking lot. And here are all those cars that we laid out there. And here's that flat 
drivable area in the parking lot we talked about, and if I rotate this way, you can see that this information heads out here this way. Each one of these gray lines represents 10 meters. So we, one of the tests that we run is how far out are we getting returns off the pavement. So we actually can do a little test here. Here's zero, here's 10 meters, 20, 30, 40, and here's 50. There's a return off of pavement out there. So we've actually got pretty good returns out here out to past 50 meters. And if we were to look at some of the foliage and some of the things beyond our parking lot here, this is the, the brush and the field that, that's out here. Uh, if you were really lucky, uh, you would see a train because we actually have train tracks that come right down here. And on a good day when the trains come by, we all come running out here and watch the train trains uh, run by here. This is the Amtrak line that then the trains will come by at high speed, and that's kind of fun. But uh, I, guess, I guess we all need lives. Uh, if we were to go to the top like this, you can actually see the wall of the building, and you can see how the different lasers sweep out a pretty flat wall here, and this is the, the edge of our building here and then over here, and that continues. So this gives you a sense of what the LiDAR sensor looks like, and this is a, an image that all the people who manufacture our products here are very, very used to. Uh, every now and then we'll see trucks drive down along here, and you can see them very clearly, and uh, some other things. And these are all cars. Yeah, these are all cars up here that are, uh, that are, that are being shown by the LiDAR sensor.